Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my front yard and welcome back to my series I'm doing on building my new trailer. If this is your first time here, I'll leave the link up in the cards and down in the description to the playlist that contains all the videos that bring you up to where we are right now. It feels like just yesterday I was showing the introduction video and telling you all about the things I like and don't like about my old trailer and uh, here we are right back around. So this time we're going to cover the registration process in a uh, decent detail, wrap things up and uh, just sort of summarize things and hopefully fill in any little gaps and holes in the story. So we're going to cover how I got this first. Now of course this process is going to vary depending on where you're at. Even here within the U.S. it's going to vary depending on the state you're in. Maybe it's similar to this, maybe it's something totally different, but I'm just really going to focus on my experience here getting a homemade trailer titled in the state of Minnesota. And it all starts with this guy here, the uh, Department of Public Safety's uh, homemade trailer registration form thing. <laughs> so this is a form that covers everything you need to apply for a title for your trailer. And this is going to sort of dictate the flow of this video. So if you go through the form, we can kind of figure out the things that we're going to need in order to apply for our uh, title. So the first thing up here, uh, we're going to need receipts because I spent uh, a bit more than five grand on this thing. <laughs> the, uh, the weight capacity, which we'll cover in a little bit, is going to be greater than 6,000 pounds, so I'm going to need some photos. Uh, you, my identifying information, whatever. This is the totals we spent on different components in the trailer, so that's going to relate back to our um, receipts. So we're going to need those. We're also going to need, well, the total value of the trailer is going to be based on the receipts. We're going to need the empty weight, so how much this thing weighs is sitting here in the driveway. And we're also going to have to decide on a gross weight capacity for the trailer. So easiest thing first, photos of all four sides of the trailer. That was uh, pretty easy. Took some pictures on my phone, got them printed out, and uh, there we go. I haven't gotten prints in a very long time, so step one done. So now the next easiest thing to knock out is going to be weight and on a trailer. Figuring out the weight of this thing is actually fairly easy, and this is gonna tie into the receipts part. So a lot of the weight of this trailer is pretty well known, so you know exactly how much steel you used, so you can actually know what the actual total amount of steel is going into this thing within reason, and then you have an idea of how much everything else beneath the steel weighs. So the, uh, the stuff that connects the steel thing to the ground. So because it's kind of fun, I broke it out a little bit and we're gonna go back in time and just walk through this thing as it was getting heavier and heavier. <laughs> so the first thing is gonna be the frame. So when I had the entire frame welded up together and I was spinning it around on the sawmill, that total weight at that point was 711 pounds. The next thing I did is I brought the two tongue pieces on. Those each were weighing in at 117 pounds. 17 and a half pounds. So with the two tongue members on there, that's 235 pounds added to the 711. That's 946 pounds right there. So that is essentially the rough weight of that thing when I had that frame spinning around on the, on the rotisserie for the first time. The next big thing to go on was the decking. That's two sheets of 10 gauge steel. Each sheet weighs 225 pounds. So that adds 450 pounds to the total weight of the trailer. Now we're at 1396. Next little thing here is going to be the chain tray and the safety rails that added 140 pounds, so that's 1536. I added the rear light bar, which was a staggering 35 pounds. The next like biggest thing was the fenders. They're made out of one sheet of that 10 gauge steel plus some tube. Again, the 10 gauge steel sheet is 225 pounds plus a bit of bar stock. So each fender weighs about 120 pounds. So we're gonna add that onto our total. We're at uh, 1,811 pounds. Another big thing that I put on here was the front jack. That was 64 pounds. So that's 1,876 pounds. Now for some of the surprisingly heavier things, everything that connects this trailer to the ground. So the axles were each coming in at 45 pounds. The backing plates for the brake assemblies, those were each 12 pounds. The brake drums were 35 pounds. And then the tires themselves are each 82 pounds. We also have the springs in there with the hangers and all that hardware. 
So that whole assembly, those two axle complete assemblies with suspension, adds another 600 pounds to the total weight of the trailer, bringing my little running total here to 2,476 pounds. So that total takes care of the bigger stuff, and then you start thinking about all the smaller things that are on here, like this adjustable coupler mount, the actual coupler itself, uh, you know, stake pockets, the giant D-rings, my light boxes, everything else that's not really counted in that, the lights, the wiring, everything like that. So you kind of just throw a, uh, a number at that and that would be close enough for most instances. So my guess is this thing would probably weigh around 2,800 pounds or so. But I know an educated guess probably isn't good enough for a lot of you. So let's uh, head to the scale and get an actual weight on this thing. So I picked a nice rainy day for this. Now one question I got you know, throughout the years is why don't I stop at like a truck scale with a log I'm hauling and see how much I actually weigh. Well, here's the thing. Where I live, uh, they don't really have truck scales like close by, or at least on the way back from a log pickup. So the scale I'm going to today is 15 miles outside of the city. So that's even most, I mean, most pickups I do are under 15 miles anyway. So I'm going further to weigh this than normally I would actually hollow log. This of course is also going to give me a good opportunity to see how this thing performs at freeway speeds. So that should be kind of interesting. I think it's going to be a little bit weird pulling this thing down a freeway and thinking the thing I'm pulling behind me I built in my backyard. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hopefully it pulls nice and smoothly. We get there and we can get this thing weighed and then uh, come all the way back home. Should be a nice little hour long round trip outing thing. Okay, here we go on the freeway. Uh, it's 60. It seems to be uh, smooth. 65. Yeah, just going. Okay, I got my first combined weight, so now I'm gonna unhook my trailer and uh, go through again and weigh just the truck. All right, can you come on in for the ticket? Thank you. All right, I got my tickets. Let's head back and talk about how much this trailer weighs. Okay, who's ready to see the actual numbers? <laughs> So the first ticket here is just the weight of my truck alone, which uh, I knew how much this truck weighed. I knew it weighed like 9,000 pounds empty. I didn't quite realize the front end alone is over 5,000 pounds. That uh, high open Cummins is uh, beefy. <laughs> the next one here is the combined truck and trailer. So just under 12,000 pounds, 11.9. So the difference between them is 2,920 pounds. That's the weight of the trailer. So that's probably gonna surprise some of you because I think a lot of people overestimate how much things weigh. Now it was uh, a little bit of a snowier day the last time I told you how much this trailer was roughly going to weigh. So the empty weight of the new trailer should be close to 3,000 pounds, so about 1,000 pounds more than the current one. That's gonna be about the same weight as any other trailer you could buy in this sort of weight capacity, but that's gonna be an eight foot longer trailer. That's gonna be an 18 or a 20 foot long trailer. So for those who don't know, a 20 foot trailer with tandem 7K axles usually comes in around 3,000 pounds. So this is uh, pretty much right on par with what I figured it was going to weigh. Another big thing I want you to think about with the actual weight of the trailer has to do with the suspension itself. Those springs expect a certain amount of load for an empty weight on this thing. Otherwise, this trailer is gonna be bouncing around, driving down the road when it's empty and that's not gonna be fun to tow behind you. So we have our photos, now we have our weight. Let's just talk about the gross weight capacity of the trailer. So if you're operating commercially, there are sort of two numbers you have to consider and think about. The first number is 10,000 pounds. That is going to be a weight rating of a trailer being towed. 
And at that point, you need to have a DOT number and you need to have a medical card. The DOT number is very easy to obtain. It's basically just telling the government that you are operating and the medical card is a very, very basic and simple physical exam. Uh, I got mine in like a half hour and you're in and out and it costs like $70. So it's not a huge hurdle to get into that 10,000 pound mark. That's why you'll see a lot of trailers with tandem 5,000 pound axles rated for 9,990 so that the drivers are underneath that 10,000 pound limit and don't need those two things. My wife's home. Oh, you got your bag. Just gallivanting, huh? Out shopping at the shops. So now the other number you want to keep in mind is going to be 26,000. Really? Dima, what are you doing? It's shooting videos. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, you're going to be in this video now. Yeah, but Lindsay Brian interrupted me like literally a minute before you called, so now it's, now it's a funny joke. All right, so maybe, maybe for real this time. <laughs> the other number you need to keep in mind is 26,000 pounds. That is going to be the maximum combi combined gross weight rating of a tow vehicle and a trailer that you can move with a regular license before you need a commercial license. So normal licenses are class D. So on the back of my license here in Minnesota, we've got the uh, restriction right there. I can drive up to a combination of 26,000 pounds, but you can see we have exemptions for recreational vehicles and farm vehicles. So if you happen to live on a farm and you're driving stuff back and forth from that farm as part of your agricultural business, you're exempt. Or if you get whatever you're driving classified as an RV, you're also exempt from that. So that means you need to start thinking about the vehicle you're going to use to tow your trailer and keeping that combination at 26,000 pounds or less. So in my case, my truck has a, weighting, a rate weighting of 14,000 pounds, which if you take that off of the 26, leaves me with 12. So that's why this guy here is rated for 12,000 pounds. Now the general weight rating of pickup trucks is going to it's probably going to vary a little bit, but generally speaking, a one-ton dually like this is going to be 14K. A singer, single rear wheel one-ton truck is going to be 12K, and a three-quarter ton truck is going to be 10K. So if you think about that sort of logic, if you wanted to tow a 14,000-pound trailer, you would need a single rear wheel truck, uh, one ton, or a three-quarter ton. So now the real, like, maximum real weight rating of this thing would be something like this. You would have the total capacity of both axles. In my case, that's 14,000 pounds, plus what the trailer is gonna put onto the truck. So that's gonna be, let's say another 1,500 pounds. The actual like maximum physical capacity of this thing would be 15,500 pounds. But in my case, I wanna keep the combination set up so that the driver of this truck, either myself or someone else, does not need a commercial license to tow this combination. Now, I have been wanting to get a commercial license for a while. I've been wanting to learn how to drive a big rig for a long time. So that's something that's probably my future. But uh, with this again, I'm not super worried about it. Ugh. So the trailer is just essentially derated from its absolute uh, max to something that's legally able to be used by someone with a regular license and that their truck I have. Now someone might ask why I bother to get a dually if it's going to limit my actual towing capacity with my current license. And let's just say I have larger aspirations for things and a lot of people have been asking about the truck so I think we'll probably do a video here in the near future on the truck since I've actually had it now for a year already. That was a fast year. So with a rating of 12,000 pounds minus the actual empty weight of the trailer that puts me just over 9,000 pounds of payload capacity, which for what I'm doing is, uh, is plenty. You also might notice that I have this thing stripped down for that uh, measure, I guess. So for the registration purposes, I want to have a number on the absolute maximum I can put on here. So if I was needing to get the most amount of weight on here as possible, I can remove all the unnecessary accessories and gain back a little more capacity. So without the winch and the arch and the rear jacks, that saves 400 pounds of weight that I could uh, use to haul something where I don't need those things. If I was moving some machinery or a uh, piece of equipment or something and I needed to get up a little bit higher, I can just pull those things off and get that little bit extra capacity. But uh, even with the winch and all the other stuff on there, that's still 
uh, what, eight and a half thousand pounds, a little bit over that, 8,600 pounds. That's a lot of logs. That's a really big log if it's just one, and that's way plenty for what I'm doing, especially with short trips locally. This being an urban logging trailer specifically, it's made for quick pickups around the city. So multiple trips at 8,000 pounds, that's a lot of logs. Next, let's talk a bit about uh, what I spent. Okay, I'm just gonna cover the, the bigger items since it's a little more exciting. So this is the uh, main order for the steel. For the very first stuff I hauled here on the old trailer, this is the ticket for that. So you can see how much everything costs. And again, on here, which is nice because steel is a uniform density, it'll tell you how much everything's gonna weigh too. So with a ticket like this, you have a really good idea of how much your raw materials are gonna weigh. So. That's a, there's a realistic expectation there, just for the main frame essentially, the arch and some of the other accessory things. What we got here, two grand in steel. So next is gonna be the, the more expensive things actually. These are the trailer related things. So on here we got the axles, which are $700 a piece. Those are Dexter Easy Lube axles. You got the springs, the suspension alone is another 200 bucks. As we get down here, we get to the infamous tires. I mean, $1,400 for tires. So <laughs> I always laugh when people are like, you have so much money in steel in this thing. You have no idea. The steel is a cheap part. <laughs> There's the, uh, the weld on adjustable coupler bracket thing. Uh, you know, the coupler, the junction boxes, the harness, the wiring harness alone, 45 bucks and you got a breakaway battery and some lights and things. So $36.70 for trailer specific parts. So with all that in here, we got steel is these two items here. So we're at $2,400 in steel. We've got $36.70 for the wheels, axles, and everything else trailer related. I've got the jack, the paint, and uh, some more lights here for another almost $700. So my total all in cost is almost $7,000, $6,777.56. So with that information all figured out, we really have everything we need to go to the DMV and apply for a title and a license plate. So we would take this form, all of the receipts, those pictures with us, and we're gonna get a application for title to fill out. On here, they're gonna figure out how much you owe in taxes for registering this thing. So let's take a look at that and we'll add it to our total of my total all in cost on this build. So you're gonna stand at the counter, they're gonna punch some stuff into a computer and they're gonna fill in all the fees you owe for your trailer. So my all in total was $495.54. So basically another 500 bucks. So I'm at 7,250-ish total. So here in Minnesota, they're gonna send you home with your plate on the same day and your title will come in the mail. And as you can see on here, I'm an F class, which is 12,000 pounds. So I have several small things that I wanna do on the trailer still, and I think I'll do a compilation of those in the future. The biggest small thing is gonna to be to mount the plate, and that goes down in this area here. Now, in one of the videos somewhere, someone recommended that they used a piece of rubber as a backer for the plate, as it's hanging down there, so if you back into something, it just flexes out of the way. So I got a chunk of rubber here. I'm gonna make a mount for the plate with a backer being rubber, so it's like a, like a mud flap <laughs> essentially I guess so uh, I will do that and I will show that in a future video but it's not going to be anything crazy piece of angle iron and some bolts and plate is there <laughs> so I am just uh, super ecstatic about this thing at this point it is uh, totally ready to roll and ready to go so I'm going to officially move over to this from this <laughs> time to move everything over and get this thing into log mode.
So I know I'm supposed to christen this bad boy, and uh, I'm supposed to do it with champagne. But two problems. I like champagne. I don't feel like busting a bottle of champagne in our driveway no. and having to clean up glass. So we're just going to pop this bottle of Prosecco in a bit of a celebratory something. Cheers. Yeah. Also, when you break a bottle of champagne, you don't get to drink it. So it's also the... I don't get the point. I'm sure there's some like folklore or something about it. So we'll just get this bad boy going here. Here you go. <gasps> ah! You did! <laughs> I don't know how you do that even. Just uh, give it a little squeeze and just let, let it fly. <laughs> oh man, so we got... That's nice and bubbly. That's a good... Uh... That's a good pour. That's a good pour. So what do you think, Mommy? I made this trailer. I know. You made it for JR. I know. That's what he keeps saying. Cheers. Good job, Piglet. Pouring out for the homies. That's how you do it. That's not what you do! <laughs> Tastes like success. It does. <laughs> <laughs> so some of you probably know better than this by now. The real christening is gonna happen. This paint's never gonna look as good ever again. Let's uh, let's give it a Matt Cremona christening. Oh my god. <laughs> Some good paint, huh? Oh, wait, we got a little dent here. We got a dent. So real quick on the welding consumable side of what I used. So I used two of these 20 cubic foot tanks for the MIG gas. As far as MIG wire goes, this is my second 12 pound spool that I have on here. And that uh, spool is probably about half gone now. And now for the most exciting part, how many stick electrodes did I use? So that tin there started out as 50 pounds. It was uh, full when I started the project. Let's see where this takes me. We have the error margin of the tin itself, but regardless, uh, 27 pounds, four ounces or so. I wonder how many uh, stick electrodes it actually is. Yeah, so about uh, 300 sticks. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot of welding. So now lastly, let's talk a bit about is it worth it to build your own trailer? <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, for that, it's, uh, it's going to be a big depends sort of thing. So first off, this is obviously a homemade trailer. I built this thing myself, and also it's a fully custom trailer. So it is exactly the trailer that I wanted. So this is not like an off the shelf kind of thing. So regardless, if you wanted something like this, you would have to have someone make it for you custom. So it's not gonna be as inexpensive as any other trailer. So keep that in mind. I think for most things though in life, if you look at doing them yourself versus paying someone to do it, it's probably cheaper as far as opportunity costs go to have someone else build things for you. However, in case of this, I just enjoy making things and I really, really enjoyed the journey of making a trailer. I got so much fulfillment out of the process of actually building it and now that it's done, I have so much pride in being able to say that I built this thing myself in my backyard. So for those factors at least, I am super glad that I built my own trailer. One advantage building it myself gave me over having someone else build a custom trailer for me is I have absolute complete control of everything that went into the build. I know every little part of it. I know that there were no corners cut anywhere. So there's a lot of value there for me at least to know that everything is exactly as I wanted it as far as the design goes and as far as the construction goes as well. And one possibility too is a hybrid, I guess, of sorts. So you could have the trailer custom fabricated by a fabrication shop and then you could handle all the wiring and the paint and whatever else there so you can be sure you have the exact wiring job you want and you can be sure you have exactly the tires and the axles you want and all the other stuff so you could always piecemeal it out too but man i am so glad that i built this thing by myself in my driveway there is just so much pride in being able to say that and now that it is a functional rolling trailer that is just a huge win for me. This is not something I thought I'd ever be able to do, especially a couple of years ago before I even knew how to weld. 
or anything about trailers. Just the idea, the concept of building a trailer yourself just seems so foreign and strange to me. So this is a big milestone for me at least, just as far as confidence goes. So I guess for that reason myself, I am again, super glad that I built it. And obviously the best part of this whole thing is the fact that it actually works. So uh, check out this thing. <laughs> No problem getting a log this big up here. This is what this trailer is designed to actually get. Logs this size is, uh, is right on par with what I had in mind for it. It towed perfectly well, like the smoothest tow I've ever had in my life. It's so smooth, it follows right behind the truck. Absolutely no problem. So the time that I invested making sure my axles were aligned correctly and everything was laid out well, really, really worked out well for me. Now one question I got along the build a lot was why are the axles so far back and it's not going to put a lot of tongue weight onto the truck. So I will tell you this much. What you need to think about with your axle placement is get yourself outside of the realm of uniform load distribution. This is not a uniformly distributed load. There is way more weight on that end than there is on this end. So I need my axles further back to get my tongue weight right where it needs to be. So for this log, I have a tongue weight of about 1,300 pounds, which puts me just over 10% of the total weight onto the tongue, which is where you really want to be. If I had to try to put something like this on my old trailer, I would have probably had negative tongue weight, and I wouldn't be able to even go down the road with something like this. So who is all the time? So I'm glad it worked. I am, again, just, I am just blown away that I built this, this thing right here. <laughs> in the driveway and I was able to go out and get this thing and bring it back here with no problem, everything working out exactly as it should have. So I really hope you enjoyed the build series, maybe it inspired you to build your own trailer or just take a look at trailers differently as well. I know for me, before I knew a whole lot about trailers, I didn't know what I was looking at. And I think after watching this build, you're going to be very surprised with the other trailers you see rolling down the road. <laughs> so. In the future, I'll have a video on some additions to the trailer, including the mounting of the license plate. We're also gonna have a video here on the first time using this thing, picking up this giant thing. So look for that in the future as well. I'm just, can you tell I'm happy? <laughs> so I wanna say thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the trailer build, anything on the sawmill, anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time. <laughs> Happy working, because it's all about the wood, even when it's steel. <laughs>